men of God, welcome to the Immortal Combat Men's Conference, Confronting the Heart of Darkness. I'm Deacon Harold Burke Sivers, and my talk today will be on praying the rosary for spiritual warfare. What are we up against in our culture today, men? Well, you know, the old traditional saying, the world, the flesh, and the devil. St. Paul says regarding the world in Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6, for those who live according to the flesh, uh, and what he means there is according to the ways and the thinking of the world, uh, focus their minds on the things of the world, which makes sense. If you're thinking worldly, you're going to act worldly. But those who live according to the spirit, to the mind of God, set their minds on the things of the spirit. Makes sense. Here's the key. To set the mind on the flesh, on the things of the world, is death. And death here means to cut yourself off from God's life. To cut yourself off from the life of God is death. But to set the mind on the things of the Spirit, on the things of God, are life and peace. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today uh, through praying the rosary. What about the flesh? In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, Paul says, Among these we all once lived in the passions of our flesh. Among these means among the people uh, in the community. We all lived like they did, uh, just with our passions, following our, our bodily desires and, and the desires of our minds. And so we were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But then he goes on to say, but we have put on the mind of Christ. So the flesh with all its desires, all its appetites, money, power, sex, drugs, all those things that are luring us away from having that deep relationship that Christ calls us to, that he invites us to share in his very life. And finally, the devil. First Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. It's very clear. Peter says, be sober, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a lion, like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering is required of your brotherhood throughout the world. So we cannot get through this life without suffering. Uh, and so the devil's going to try to take that suffering, which is unavoidable, and turn it into an opportunity for despair. He's going to take our uh, our longings and our yearnings and redirect them to things that are not focused on getting to our ultimate end, our ultimate goal, which is life forever with God in heaven. So the world, the flesh, and the devil. And so with regard to these things uh, and to spiritual warfare, way back in 1976, <laughs> St. John Paul II, uh, when he, before he was even Pope, he was Carol uh, Wojtyla uh, back then, uh, visited the United States, and he made in a now famous speech in Philadelphia, he said, we are now standing in the face of the greatest historical confrontation humanity has ever experienced. And he says he doesn't realize, he doesn't think that the church realizes how uh, serious this confrontation is. He said, this confrontation lies within the, the plans of God's divine providence. He said, um, uh, we are now facing the, the, the church and the anti-church the gospel and the anti-gospel, the Christ and the antichrist. Way back in 1976. Now, all these years later, we find ourselves in the midst of a culture that acts as if God were dead, where the allurements and the temptation of sin and the atrocities of abortion and euthanasia, the plagues of pornography, human trafficking, and the so-called redefinition of marriage are slowly killing the life of God within us. Yet, the reality is that we, we live in a world of eclipse, right? If you think of an eclipse of the sun, a world consumed by a darkness of sin and death. And we need God's light in this world now more than ever. Uh, one of the greatest weapons in that arsenal in the battle against the seed of Satan is total consecration to the Blessed Virgin Mary. You know, at Fatima, our, our Blessed Mother exhorts us sacrifice yourselves for sinners and say many times, especially when you make some sacrifice, oh Jesus, it is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners, for the reparation of the sins committed against my immaculate heart. Our Blessed Mother is a beacon of hope 
that pierces the dense fog of the anxiety and the trepidation and the anger and the frustration and uh, uh, the fear uh, that uh, she's the, 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 the path that lights us on our way uh, to our ultimate goal, which is life with her son, deep enriching faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All that remains is our choice either to accept God's invitation to love and to life and to intimacy and communion so that his love can be effective and fruitful in our lives, or we can cower in the darkness and evade the light of his love. So the triumph of God's love through Mary's immaculate heart not only frees us from sin, but also frees us for participation in the work of insisting Christ in his work of building the kingdom of heaven here on earth, uh, becoming the light of the world in, in the darkness. So to evangelize means to bear witness in a convincing manner to the victory of God's love over the power of evil in ourselves and in the world. Um, this is, means that we have to stand up uh, first and foremost to, to defend our faith by the witness of our very lives. Now, there are some, some great saints that have used the rosary. You see in the background, this is me speaking at, a, uh, at a, an event in Australia, and, I, and I'm using this rosary. The rosary that you, you see in the, in, the, in the background is the same rosary I'm holding in my hand right now. In fact, this is the same rosary that's on the cover of my book, Behold the Man. You know, um, the, the rosary is a powerful and effective weapon, but don't listen to me. How about some of the great saints of the church? who also, great men, great warriors of the faith, who also saw the rosary as a weapon against sin and death. How about St. Louis de Montfort, one of the most Marian saintly men that has ever lived in the history of the church. He says, the salvation of the world began through Mary, and through her it must be accomplished. In the second coming of Jesus Christ, Mary must be known and openly revealed by the Holy Spirit so that Jesus may be known, loved, and served through her. He goes on to say, this is great. Mary must become as terrible as an army in battle array to the devil and his followers, especially in these latter times. For Satan, knowing that he has little time, even less time now, to destroy souls intensifies his efforts and his onslaughts every day. Man, St. Louis de Montfort, Wrote, back and wrote that back at the time when he was alive. He could be writing that for today. Look at what's going on in our world today. Uh, he will not hesitate to stir up savage persecutions and set treacherous snares for Mary's faithful servants and children, who he finds more difficult to overcome than others. Right? So uh, St. Louis de Montfort is talking about St. Mary through praying the rosary helps us to be battle ready helps us to, keep, to, be get, to be ready for battle against the forces of darkness and sin and death in our world. So don't get frustrated when you see the so-called redefinition of marriage. When you look at religious freedom, um, when you look at people trying to change sexual identity and all these uh, things that weigh heavily upon our hearts, the racism. You know, we, we look at all these things that weigh heavily upon us. And, and sometimes we, we have a tendency to despair because it's, 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 the problem is so huge. You know, we think there's nothing that can, that can fix this. Oh, yes, the power of prayer, the power of sacrifice, the power of prayer and fasting, that extremely powerful combination, uh, more powerful than the combination from Mike Tyson. The rosary is more powerful than that. Uh, so St. Louis Moffat goes on to say, what does a, a soldier in the army of Mary look like? He says, we know there will be true disciples of Jesus Christ. And so what is a disciple? Someone who hears, accepts, and puts into practice in their life every day the teachings of Jesus Christ and the faith. That is a true disciple. We know there will be true disciples in imitating his poverty, his humility, his contempt for the world, and by his love. They will point out the narrow way to God in pure truth according to the Holy Gospel and not according to the maxims of the world. I love that. Jesus says very clearly, the road to heaven is narrow and very few will find it, but everybody thinks they're going to get to heaven and they're not. The road to destruction, God says, is wide and many will find it. So we have to stay on the narrow way. And in order to do that, we have to think according to the mind of Jesus and the teachings of the church and not according to the culture. 
you know, we, we have to resist the temptation to be liked and to be loved and accepted by the world. We have to focus on being accepted and to commit our lives to following Christ, just like the many martyrs who came before us. We pray in the mass who came before us marked with the sign of faith. And often that faith was marked with their own blood. Uh, Louis de Montfort says, their hearts will not be troubled, the, the soldiers in the army of Mary. Their hearts will not be troubled. They will not fear any man, no matter how powerful he may be. They will have the two-edged sword of the word of God in their mouths and the bloodstained standard of the cross on their shoulders. They will carry a crucifix in their right hand and a rosary in their left and the names of Jesus and Mary in their hearts. By God's will, Mary to, is going to prepare them to extend God's kingdom over the unpious and the unbelievers. How this come about, only God knows. For our part, we must yearn and wait for it in silence and prayer. Awesome. St. Jose Maria Escriba says, love Our Lady. She will obtain for you abundant grace to conquer your daily struggle. Huh? So that's the... Here's, here's the thing. My, my brothers, the devil does not want you praying the rosary. You know what the devil wants you to think? Oh, praying the rosary is boring. Just saying a bunch of Hail Marys over and over again. What good is that? That's what he wants you to think. It's only 20 minutes long. You're reflecting on the mysteries of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the heart of his blessed mother, the warrior for our faith. Uh, so he goes on to say, uh, St. Uh, Jose Maria Escriva, and the enemy will gain nothing by those foul things that continually seem to boil and rise within you, trying to engulf you in their fragrant corruption of high ideals, the, the sublime determination that Christ himself has set in your heart. I will serve. So praying the rosary will conquer those things that well up in us, that want to take us away from God's love, that want to refocus our attention on the things of the world, that want to focus our attention on, on what's best for me and not what's best for the other. No, the rosary is the antidote to that, my friends. And he says again, St. Jose Maria Escriba, uh, call her again and again, the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is listening. She sees you in danger, perhaps. With her, and with her son's grace, your Holy Mother offers you refuge in her arms, the tenderness of her embrace. Call her and you will find yourself with added strength for the new struggle. There you go, my brothers. And of course, we cannot uh, talk about the rosary as being a weapon uh, against, against sin and death uh, without talking about Padre Pio. <laughs> no, I love him. And, um, you know, uh, in the story of Padre Pio, there was once a, uh, one of the friars were called that uh, Padre Pio was interrupted uh, often by Satan, who would actually show up in his cell. And whenever that happened, he, he uh, asked for the rosary. He, uh, this seraphim of Mary, St. Padre Pio, called the Holy Rosary his weapon. He said, always hold Mary's weapon tightly in your hands, and you will always be victorious over the infernal enemies. With this weapon, Padre Pio defeated the immense multitudes of devils, uh, which he had seen raging with anger. With this weapon of Mary, he always defeated Satan and all his armies uh, throughout the entire span of his life. Fully understanding the power of Mary and the, mo and the potency of, of her weapon against Lucifer. And Padre Pio wished that all of his spiritual children, uh, uh, before they die, would, would pray, would really take up the rosary and pray it fervently every day. Love Our Lady and make her loved. Always recite the Holy Rosary, Padre Pio says. You know, in our battle against uh, the Goliaths in our life, you know, David fought Goliath, um, and we also have Goliaths in our life. Some of us are struggling with uh, pornography. Some of us may be uh, struggling with same-sex attraction. Some of us may be struggling not to take that next drink. Some of us have issues of anger. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we, you know, sometimes we just want to punch 
someone, even someone that we love, even maybe our own wife. And, and you stop yourself. And you say, whoa, whoa, where did that come from? You know, some of us may have been bullied uh, when we were younger because we had, we had glasses and we had braces. We were the wrong color. We had the wrong accent. You were in the wrong neighborhood. You know, maybe you uh, raped a girl in college. You know, she was drunk. You took advantage of that. I mean, maybe you helped procure an abortion for your girlfriend or maybe even for your, or for your wife. But you didn't, you know, back, and, you know, and we see you have all these things weighing on us. These are the Goliaths in our life. And sometimes like the armies of Israel, they were afraid of the Goliath. You know, um, but the rosary is the weapon of choice. Satan cannot stand to hear the names of Jesus and Mary, which are repeated throughout the rosary. Uh, the devil will flee. He will run from any man who devoutly prays the rosary every day. He will find an easier prey, an easier target um, to tempt away from relationship with Christ. God the Father sends the Holy Spirit to meet us, to awaken and ignite the fire of faith within us men. The Holy Spirit is the Lord and giver of life that we pray every Sunday. And if we cooperate with the grace of, that the Holy Spirit freely gives us, if we say yes to God's invitation to life-giving love, in imitation of the Blessed Mother's yes, that she said to uh, the, uh, the angel Gabriel when he came at the incarnation, uh, then our lives will truly be transformed. Mary's greatest desire is for us to find her son and to bring him fully into our hearts and home, just as she brought him along with Joseph into their hearts and to their home at Nazareth. Now, it's funny, when David fights Goliath, you remember that um, David tried to put on Saul's armor and he threw it off because why? David realized you can't defeat the Goliath in your life with the weapons of man. And so he grabs his, uh, uh, he has a staff in one hand, he has a sling and, 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 uh, and five smooth stones from the brook and he put them in his shepherd's bag or wallet. So a sling and five smooth stones, huh? <laughs> I think David... Um, defeated Goliath with a type of rosary. Now, a lot of people thought when David wanted to fight Goliath, it was a suicide mission because they had, David has no chance of defeating such a colossal enemy. Let, and, and then they made a mistake. The people who said that about David made a mistake. And we can't make that same mistake with the Goliaths in our life. Sometimes we think those Goliaths are so strong, so powerful, so overwhelming that we cannot defeat those Goliaths. We cannot defeat alcohol. We got, cannot defeat pornography. We cannot defeat drugs. We cannot defeat anger. We cannot defeat despair. We cannot defeat racism. We cannot defeat all the things that bring us down, whatever that may be for you, man of God, whatever your Goliath is. Don't make the mistake of thinking you cannot defeat that Goliath. David grabbed his weapon, his sling and five smooth stones, and uh, Goliath threatens his life. And when you finally face your Goliath, he will turn on you. But I love this. Uh, 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 Goliath says to David, am I a, 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 a dog that you come to me with sticks? In other words, do you think you can defeat me, the Goliath in your life, with your little weapons of, of God, your little rosary? And what does David say? I love David. He says, you come to me with sword and javelin and spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of the armies of Israel who you have defied. So David says, all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you, Goliath, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that is the Lord who saves, not by the sword, not by the spear, because the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into my hand, huh? He will give you into my hand. So trust in the power of praying the rosary faithfully every day, 20 minutes, reflecting on and connecting your own life with the mysteries that you pray, uh, reflecting on the mysteries of Christ's uh, uh, passion, death, resurrection, and, and the salvific gifts that he gives to us. And, and through the the, the, heart, the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary that we remember so beautifully in those incredible mysteries of the rosary. So men, there are going to be people in your life, possibly members of your own family, that will try to discourage you and deter you from taking your faith to the next level because they want you to stay comfortable right where you are. And if we are to take our faith life to the next level, men, we've got to get uncomfortable because we live our spirituality from the cross of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul says, I preach Christ and Christ crucified. 
So um, you may even have it convinced yourself that your vices and addictions that control and enslave you are too powerful. That is a lie, man. When we think that, uh, so when we think like that, Satan wins. Pray for a spirit of boldness. Pray at all times in the spirits, in, in the in the spirit, using the rosary, huh? Uh, be prepared to excise, to excise anything from your life that causes you to sin. Because when you pray the, the rosary, it helps you uh, the, for grace to work in your life, to cooperate better with the grace of the sacraments. Because we cooperate with the grace of the sacraments, we find the spiritual strength that will help us defeat the Goliaths in our life. And what opens the door to that, one of the, the, the great weapons that we can use in that regard is the most holy rosary with, without doubt. Now, men, um, when St. Paul uh, says in Ephesians chapter six, you know, he talks about the armor of God. And one of the things you have to do is gird our loins and gird our loins means to pull your pants up, right? When you got ready to, to fight in battle, you didn't wear your, your pants down sagging. You pulled your pants up and you prepared for, for battle. And so we have to gird our loins to prepare for the battle against the forces of evil in this world today. Now, Satan will try to hand us the poison fruit of sin in the form of sexual temptation. Then we are to grab the sword and cut his arm off. When he extends that, he tries to extend the poison fruit of sin toward us, we take the sword and we cut off his arm. When Satan tries to destroy our hearts by making pleasure uh, the God of our life, right? Because pleasure is not a bad thing. Pleasure is a, a means to our ultimate end. It's one of the things that God gives at a very base level, a very, at a very ephemeral level. Um, uh, that, that connects our minds and our hearts to God. But what Satan does, he takes pleasure out of his proper context of being a means to an end, and he holds it up in the culture. He says, pleasure is an end in itself. Pleasure is your God. And when we do that, we grab our rosaries, men, and we head to the Adoration Chapel. We head to the Adoration Chapel, and, and we pray the rosary before our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why adoration? Why that combination is so powerful, like prayer and fasting? I would say adoration and the rosary. Why? Is it always better to be in the presence of the person that you love when you're praying, uh, when you're speaking to them, right? Is it always better if you're married to be with your wife rather than talk to her on the phone? Same thing. It's always better to be in the presence of the person that you love when you're talking to them. So we're in, in the presence of our Lord, uh, body, blood, soul, divinity, and the Eucharist, and we're praying the rosary, that is a powerful, again, powerful combination like prayer and fasting. You know, let's not make excuses for not attending Mass every Sunday and every Holy Day. You know, let's pull that helmet of salvation tighter around our heads. Let's grab our Bible, grab our rosaries, grab our families, and head over, and head over to the church. Uh, we wake up every morning. Start your day by remembering that and thanking God for the gift of your life. Every morning I get up, first thing out of my mouth, literally before I hit the ground, Lord, thank you for allowing me to see the light of another day so that I may give honor, praise, and glory to your most holy name. You know, uh, always have that in the forefront of your mind. When you begin to doubt, and as Peter says, your advers the adversary, the devil starts to prowl around like a roaring lion. For example, you go to a men's conference, uh, and, and, you know, you feel that high at the end of the conference. Yes, I got this. You know, finally, I, I've, I've got the tools to be able to gain control over my life. And then what happens? You, you, it lasts for about a month, maybe <laughs> three weeks or four weeks. Then all of a sudden, the, 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 the things start to creep back into your life again. You start to fall back into the habits. You start to fall back into those patterns. You start to fall back into those ways of thinking that takes your life away from being focused on God. You stop going to your men's groups. You stop praying. I'll, I'll, I'll make it. I'll just pray twice tomorrow. And we fall. No, no, no. We have to make this the single most important priority in your life. Not your job, my brothers, not your job. Your relation with Christ is number one. You make that first and watch how the graces flow into all other aspects of your life. And I can't think of a quicker way of, of, of getting there, a better way of getting there. And, and at the same time, defeating the temptation for sin and defeating the power of the devil than the most holy rosary, men. You know, the Lord says to us, I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my savior. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help. 
my stronghold. Yes, that is the language of, of faith. That is the, the language of putting on the armor of God and fighting against the force of evil that are trying to destroy us and our families by going through us. They have to step over my dead body before they will get to my wife. The devil will get to my wife and kids. And that's our attitude, man, because we're warriors. We're warriors in the army of Mary. Now, when Paul describes that uh, armor of God in Ephesians chapter six, what's the only part of the body? Because he talks about you know, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, sword of the spirit, gird your loins, you know, uh, breastplate of salvation, that, that whole thing. What, what is the only uh, uh, part of the body that's not covered? The back, right? Because the way the Roman soldiers fought back then, um, they fought kind of like in a semicircle. And uh, they expect the, per the soldier fighting next to you to protect your back. That's where we get the, uh, the expression, I got your back from. So men, who's got your back? Well, definitely the, um, the Immortal Combat Conference does because you have access to all these talks. When you're feeling down, when you're feeling depressed, when you're feeling like you, know, you need strength, you need that extra oomph, you need that extra kick, you need that, that motivation, the, we're here and available for you. So Paul says in short, put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of, of the present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, so the devil and all his minions. Therefore, take the whole armor of God that you're able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand." So what saint can better teach us about the meaning of standing strong, even in the midst of suffering, than the Blessed Mother? Um, in Luke's gospel, remember, Simeon says to the Blessed Mother, behold, this child is destined for the fall and the rise of memory at, at Jesus's circumcision, presentation in the temple. This child is destined for the fall and the rise of many and a sign to be spoken against. And the sword shall pierce your own soul so that the thoughts of many hearts may be laid there. So Mary's suffering at the cross created an opening for us to lay our hearts next to her immaculate heart. And that's what the rosary helps us to do. Again, reflecting, because what Mary always wants to lead us to her son. Always wants to lead us to her son. That's what the rosary is doing. It's not praying to Mary. It's praying through Mary, laying our hearts next to her pierced soul, next to her immaculate heart that will bring us closer to her son, because that's the goal. Now, uh, we can't talk about the Holy Family and Mary without talking about Joseph, right? Joseph is the head of the family. What did he do? He served as the priest in that home. So Joseph literally prayed with the rosary, with Mary, right? With Mary and Jesus. He lived the rosary. He didn't just pray the rosary. He lived the rosary in his life and in his home. He ensured that the entire family honored God by worshiping him faithfully in their home every single day with the community in the synagogue, and with all of Israel in the temple. Remember, when Jesus was 12, they lost him at the temple in Jerusalem, which is quite a long way from where they lived in Nazareth, but they made that trek every year. So Joseph was there to make sure that his family honored God first and foremost in their life as a family. So as a spiritual leader, Joseph understood the grave responsibility that comes with borrowing God's sacred name, Father. And that his primary responsibility was, was to ensure that in his home, God was feared, right? Honored, reverenced, and respected. That's what fear of the Lord means, honor, reverence, and respect. And so we as the priests in our homes and, uh, and, and even uh, fathers, priests in the parish, <laughs> our fathers for their parish families in the home, and even single men, you know, you're priests for this culture, your witnesses uh, uh, by uh, what's the main job of a priest to offer sacrifice? You sacrifice the worldly way of thinking, and you're a witness for Christ, even as a single man in the world today. Not taking advantage of all the the pleasure and allurements that will tempt men away um, uh, from uh, tempt their hearts away from having being completely focused on a deep, intimate, personal relationship with Christ. You know, and, and uh, you know, I can hear the words of uh, Joshua echoing in the heart of Joseph in his house and should echo in all of our hearts as well, men. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And exercising his sacred responsibility as a husband and a father by his stewardship of love and his example of holiness, 
Joseph created an atmosphere of life-giving love in the home of the Holy Family. Uh, he listened to God with the ear of his heart. Remember, every time the angel came to him, he faithfully did what the Lord asked him to do. And through his intercession, we, as husbands and fathers today, um, we can uh, carry that same spirit that Joseph did into our hearts, into our homes. And one of the best ways we can do that is to lead the family in praying the rosary. You know, um, uh, the family that prays together, it stays together, right? Father Patrick Payton. Um, so in conclusion, men, I'd like to give you John 16, 33. I have said this to you, that in me, you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. <laughs> be of good cheer. Have confidence, have faith, and have courage, men, because through the power of the Holy Rosary, we can overcome the world. We can overcome all those things that take our minds and hearts and our souls away from Christ. So pick up your weapon and use it every day to defeat the power of sin in your life. And know that I am praying with you and for you every day. God bless you, man.